have the performance selection. Yeah, now here the one thing that you can see is that kind of the biggest difference would be, of course, the temperature range we just talked about. The other thing would be the, the stability, and that would be the long-term stability. You can see the wire wound will have a 0.1 degree C uh, drift over time in the thin film. We're at 0.5. But it's quite a big difference there. The other thing that you look at and you may say to yourself, okay, time response, we're showing the wire wound. It's a, it's a much bigger sensing element, but the time response is faster than that tiny little thin film. The big difference there, of course, is because of the, the packaging that is done to the thin film to make it durable for industrial application. <coughs> you can see it's vibration resistance is 20 G's, whereas the wire wound is 15. You can imagine those little coil of platinum wire, if you vibrate that around a lot, it, it can actually move a little bit and maybe work harden, and the resistance will change a little bit. So there's no, a... Mike, oh, excuse me, my experience with that bill out in the field is, though, that they still, over time, seem to hold up better than a thermocouple. I, you know, thermocouples, after they've been used, become so brittle, you can hardly touch them and they'll right. break on you. They, they do drift quickly, and you know you may end up replacing a thermocouple you know, three or four times versus just once for the RTD. Absolutely, and I think that's a valid point because a thermocouple is less money up front, but when you factor in, you have to run thermocouple wire all the way back, and you may in, end up replacing this three or four times to the life of an RTD. Uh, right. Paying less money for it up front is really short-sighted. Right. And here we're going to be dis discussing RTD versus thermocouple. And we've really touched upon a lot of these already, but to kind of go over them again, uh, let's, look over, let's look at this and find out what's the best for your application. I'm sure everybody's out there is thinking, you know, look, I've got a certain application. Where is this going to fit? Boy, this is the time to kind of keep that open mind about it. So here we're looking at a few of the performance factors. Uh, accuracy, of course, is usually the biggest one that everybody's interested in. And you can see there, uh, standard limits thermocouple, plus or minus 4 degrees, not too impressive. And the RTD is, you know, at least 10 times better at this 0.46 degrees F. The initial calibration of the sensor, like if you need to pull that sensor out, every once in a while to check it to make sure that it's reading correctly. With the thermocouple, you're limited to doing it out on your factory floor. You'd have to pull that sensor out of the process, put it in your calibration block, and see what your control system is reading. As soon as you disconnect wires from that, the calibration on it is going to change. So you really don't have the option of pulling it out and taking it back to a lab and checking it. And that's what the RTD is able to do. You can just pull that out, take it back to your metrology lab, check it, see if it's working like it's supposed to, and then bring it back out into the location where it's located and reinstall it. it it's a little bit easier to do than trying to carry that equipment out all over your factory and being able to check it. Long-term stability, we checked on that just a little bit earlier, and the RTD has the big advantage here with just uh, 0.13 degrees C after 1,000 hours at 400 C. And when you drop the temperature down, that 0.13 number dramatically decreases also. And conversely, on the other end, if you go up over that 500 C threshold, uh, they can drift extremely fast after that point. Repeatability, the RTD has the advantage here also. The thermocouple repeatability is going to be really dependent on what your process is doing. Again, whether it's reducing atmosphere, the temperature, um, vibration, whatever's going on with it is, is going to affect it. The RTD is going to be a little more stable for the, uh, in those types of um, process processes with those kinds of characteristics. And I don't know, Harold, did you have anything uh, you wanted to add to this? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about the uh, limited to in-place calibration. 
Uh, that must be also dependent on having to run that long thermal couple wire back. Does that come into play as well? Oh, I know sure. That when you disconnect it, uh, that changes your calibration. So is that, does that go back to that wiring? Yeah, the, the, the wiring can affect the accuracy of the measurement that you're making with a thermocouple. And that, that's why you really need to leave it all connected to the thermocouple while you're checking its calibration. Yeah, and then I'm going to come back to the, to the thing that I've seen time and time again when on a high temperature application. You try to be as gentle as you can with those thermocouples, remove them from, from their uh, device, and oh, it seems like somebody drops it every time. End of conversation when that happens. Oh, yeah. Yep. And here we have some uh, process characteristics. Uh, number one, I, as far as I'm concerned, is you've got to know what temperature range you're going to be trying to measure. Because that's when the thermocouple is going to be your only choice, or am I going to be able to use an RTD? Uh, here we show some time response, you know, less than one millisecond versus 2.5 seconds. But you know, that's on a new thermocouple. As the thermocouple ages, that time response slows down dramatically. Uh, what comes to mind here for me is I went into a boiler room one time when the operator was extremely proud of how his boiler temperature was running so constant. Well, number one, if temperature is running a good constant line, it's not accurate. Something's wrong. And it had been running at that same temperature for years and years, and it came down to he had a thermocouple that it was so old, it was just, uh, it was delinquent in any response at all. I suppose there was a lot of corrosion on it, which uh, caused it to read slow. Yeah, age, probably age. Uh, hadn't been changed probably for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, you start changing things like that, and all of a sudden your boiler becomes, starts running better. Yep. Because it's actually seeing the process. You're controlling better. So if you're going to, if you have to use a thermocouple, because of you know temperature constituents here, uh, then you've got to remember I've got to keep changing that thermocouple. I just can't put it in and forget about it. Some of the environmental considerations to look at. Uh, again, we we mentioned vibration earlier, and that's really the the big thing for thermocouples. They can survive a lot of abuse, whether it's mechanical shock or high vibration. The RTDs are limited to about 30 Gs between that 5 to 350 hertz range, uh, which actually covers a lot of industrial applications. Uh, for example, just to give you some idea of how much vibration that is, if you were to be measuring a temperature on a, a diesel engine, for example, that's going to be over that 30 G limit, and it, the RTD is not going to hold up. Um, again, their thermocouples are typically used for those kinds of applications. The ambient temperature in the control system really have no effect on the decision to use a thermocouple or an RTD. Most of the control systems will accept either one, and ambient conditions you know, you're, you're limited there by the, typically the insulation that's used on the lead wires and the, um, you know, whether it's sitting outside in the weather or if it's inside in a, an industrial process, maybe it gets washed down occasionally. But the, the protection methods for either one are the same, so they're, they work equally as well. Uh, one other thing is the distance to the control system. Now here, thermocouple extension wire going from the sensor way back to a control room can be quite expensive. And you can have some um, electromagnetic or radio frequency interference at times. 